Are you on a forklift? Yeah, I am. Saluda tutti. Ciao Juventini, welcome back to the AJC and it is another beautiful victory Monday. That's right, Juve getting the job done, laying the smack down as they say on uh, Atalanta, mm -hmm. getting the 2-0 victory after what felt like a whole nother second game of stoppage time, which we will get into as well. There was some oh, we'll shenanigans in this one. <laughs> there was some shenanigans oh we'll get to that oh yeah we're gonna get to the shenanigans mm -hmm. um real quick we're gonna get the housekeeping out of the way obviously it is anthony with me today we should be joined shortly by our friend omar as well all right but we're gonna kick things off getting the housekeeping out of the way everybody who's tuning in on your audio outlets make sure you head over to youtube subscribe for all the extra content all right for those looking to support the channel we had a fantastic live watch along for this game despite it being 3 30 a.m my time okay uh got the job done there was a ton of you in here it was awesome and uh thank you for everything that's been donated through super chat that is one way okay so super chat is enabled we have the online merch store linked to our youtube and of course now there's memberships with three tiers that you can choose and select from with different sets of perks all right and the main one the easiest one sharing our content all right now thank Click you it. everybody Share it. yes and thank you, everybody, who has already chosen uh, to support in one of those uh, many, many ways. We're going to take a quick second, say what's up to everybody in the live chat this morning here. Alex P dropping the flex here. Second game in a row, we see Dushan from last season. Yes, uh -huh. yes, we're going to talk about uh, Dushan. Notice the same thing. Big, big shift in uh, attitude and body language and everything. Dan Badillo saying, massive win yesterday. June totally to Juve soon. We'll we are going to definitely, definitely touch on that. And then, of course, mm -hmm. all eyes on Sevilla for Thursday. Need to smack Sevilla this week. Big one. Big one this week there. All right. And then Apex DV9 silenced all of Bergamo yesterday. We are going to get it. into uh, the nonsense that took place there in terms of the uh, discrimination he faced, all right? And obviously not the first time. Sadly, I don't believe it's going to be the last time either. But we're going to get into it uh, all right now, okay? So as far as news headlines and whatnot, obviously touched on some of it in the live chat. We've got things with Juntoli heating up. We're going to tackle that one after we recap the match and everything. We've got Marco Verratti news, okay? A little bit of Marco Verratti uh, rumblings there, and fans are split on this one. You have you know, yours that are saying absolutely not, and then you have others that are saying absolutely take him in a heartbeat. And then we are going to get to the latest on the Court of Appeals, the rulings, the new sentencing time frame, and everything. We're going to get into that as well. Mm -hmm. And, of course, just everything in general in the aftermath of this match and this victory against Atalanta. Okay, so we're going to kick things off as we do starting lineups. Okay, starting mm -hmm. lineups Chesney, Danilo, Rugani, Sandro, Quadrado, mm -hmm. Fagioli, Locatelli, Rabio, Kostic, Di Maria, and Milik. <clears throat> A lot coming out in the start of this game from fans wondering why you wouldn't follow up with Vlavic, scored an absolute beauty. A banger there. I didn't so much have a problem with it. Uh, but mm -hmm. the other one was Rugani. Rugani instead of Bremer being in there. But honestly, we've been saying it for I don't know how long now. All of last season, even his appearances this season, Rugani has not been an issue. I wasn't too standard. concerned with him. I was more concerned with how we were going to <clears throat> attack Atalanta and would we be able to find enough and whatnot. And... Uh, pleasantly surprised but your thoughts on the lineup did you have any concerns going into it as soon as you see rogani in there you know you're going to get the blowback of why is this guy in there i have to apologize everybody illing jr not costage costage was projected it was illing jr starting that was one of the moves i liked because i thought speed yep. wouldn't be needed to hurt atalanta after they push especially on uh, the flanks 
Yeah, so those, so I guess it would be just the three, the Rugani, Ealing Jr., and Milik decisions. Rugani didn't have an issue. He has not been an issue at all this year. Yeah. Perfect setup for him in this game. Just, hey, Dan, just get out there and just cover Zabata. That's it. You just stay on him for 90 minutes. And that's all he did. He had a simple job, and he executed it perfectly. He didn't have to attack. He didn't have to distribute. He just had to find that player and stay on him. And he did it perfectly. And, that, yeah. and that's all we had to ask for him. What what else do you want from your seventh center back, whatever he is, fifth or whatever is the rotation? Illing Jr., we've been asking for this for a long time. You've been asking for it. I know Luke has been asking for it. Uh, I thought he played okay. You know, I, would Kostic have offered anything different? I thought it would have been about the same. But for a young guy being in there, I thought he, I thought yeah. he played well. He had a great yeah. first half. Uh, and then Milik Vlaovic, that game midweek, that's always going to yeah. you know, have to tinker. So I think that played into it a little bit. Uh, so I didn't really have an issue with the Milik's. With Milik's <clears throat> yeah. Now, we have our friend, okay, Omar. Ooh. And Omar's shoulders and the tank tops are becoming very popular because we're starting to bag the W's now since he's been doing it. So let's pull this, uh, let's pull this lad in here. Here he is. It doesn't even work. And we got to ask everybody, pre-game. okay, because we're a little bit split here, but we got the options on layouts here. So you got your choice here between the nice square here, okay, like this or like this. Which do you prefer, this one or this one? Hands I like down. this one. Hands down the first one. No, hands down this one. Much cleaner, much cleaner. C, number two. And then the comments then, don't cover you up, Omer. Come on. What are we talking about? But, but they do cover Luca, so there is an upside to it. Yeah. I think it's going to take it's going to take a minute to get used until to Luca it plays learns how to play that keyboard. So anyways, we're good here. We're going with the second one. Second one. See, look at that. Hands down. Hands down. Now, buongiorno Matteo. Lovely seeing you here in the live chat, my friend. Everybody's agreeing number 2. Okay, Omar. And you're not wearing a tank top, so you have no say. Okay. We just got into the lineups, went over the lineups, some of the decisions, Illing Jr., Milik, and uh, Rugani and whatnot. Um, When you saw the lineup, what was your initial gut reaction, Omer? I I told you before in the match day live, we did a day earlier, that I wouldn't be surprised if Illing plays and starts this match, and he did. In some way, he did. The rest was just, I preferred Dushan to start over Milik, but Fair. right now it kind of feels like the same. And the rest was just fine. No complaints. We have no one at right back, no right wing back. Center backs, I mean, aside from maybe Bonucci, are doing great, to be honest. Most yeah. of them. I prefer the Gatti for uh, Sandro or Bremer for Sandro, but whatever we want, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, so no issues there. Starting lineup, like I said, um, I thought a couple pieces there were perfect for what we would need against Atalanta. Now we get to the opening half, and opening couple minutes, Juve was all over Atalanta in the first couple minutes. It was uh, it was beautiful. It just obviously incredibly difficult uh, pace to keep up and whatnot. Uh, but at the start, Juve did very very well. Then Atalanta started to grow into it, and they started coming back at us. They were getting attempts. However, nothing was really threatening, too threatening. Okay, we'll put it that way. In the 21st minute, this was Juve's probably only solid opportunity in the first half, like a real solid chance. And this was a Coop Miners back pass that was actually awful. Straight to Di Maria, cuts over. Just misses crossing it into that back post, okay? Um, He was pretty choked at missing that one. That was our best opportunity first half. Three minutes later, Scalvini on a header again. You can't have Illing Jr. marking on Scalvini there. I I, I don't like these zone setups in defending set pieces. I never have. I never will. Man up accordingly. Have them make sense as to who's facing who on the defensive coverage. 
Scalvini gets way up on this. Illing's too late, can't attack that spot. And uh, this goes right off the post. That was uh, as close as they would come in the first half, uh, for sure. They did get another one. 45th minute, right before the half. Palisic absolutely shanks this one-timer, probably about eight or nine yards out from goal after mm -hmm. a, a nice dummy on the side. But towards the end of that second half, you could start to feel it. We were getting overloaded on uh, Atalanta's left flank, our right side. Right flank. Yep. And we were losing coverages. And on this one, Danilo, you could see him get caught between two minds. There's an overload happening there on our defensive right flank. He needed to attack the player that ultimately the ball was dummied. And it hit. And it was Coop Miners in the top of the area. Right before that play even develops... You see Danilo think about coming out to close that space, and then he quickly looks back, and he drops into that defensive line. That's probably level with the six-yard line. Mm -hmm. And that's where it all kind of stems from. We were getting overloaded there, and they were capitalizing and starting to hurt us. But luckily, we get to half, unscathed, 0-0. Zero, zero. We're going to get your guys' thoughts on that first half, starting with Omer. Go ahead. It's actually a bit... Maybe better than I expected because I know Atalanta are, you know, just flooding wave after wave. They are leaving a lot of space, but I felt we were kind of, wow. Yeah. Uh, I felt we were kind of, you know, I, I thought we'd be more lenient and just let them attack and look for opportunities. We didn't have too many, you know, fast players to march forward whenever they leave the space open, but... Juve did press for portions of the first half and did create chances and did, did get into the area. So overall, I didn't feel like we were losing or were the worst side. I just felt like Atalanta, you know, gave it the role and eventually they ran out of steam. You're on mute there, bud. Birdo. Ant, what was your take on the first? There time? we go. Um, I just took a look at my notes here, quick. Yeah, Scalvini off the post. I I didn't think Fajoli was very sharp in that first half. Uh, Rabio was a little non-existent. So when those, when two of the of our three, okay, it, that's let's just agree that's our best midfield. We have Locatelli, Rabio, and Fajoli. Those three have been our best midfield unit. When two of our three of our best midfield unit aren't really working appropriately. I just, I, we lost a lot in the middle. I think to Omar's point, that's why we kept seeing wave after wave. It just, it just, it just wasn't really clicking for me. I just, I thought Rogani had a great half at center back. There was no issues there, but all in all, Ben, but don't break. You know, going to halftime. We knew, we know Atlanta is our boogeyman making it to halftime. Zero, zero was fine with me. Yeah. I think uh, overall I was, I felt like that first half was pretty drab overall. I think Atalanta, towards the last 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes, turned it up. And they were getting a lot of opportunities. And it was like, okay, now I'm starting to feel a little worried because it's way too heavy one-sided for them attacking us. But uh, overall, I thought fairly drab. I was a little... I was expecting more from us in terms of what our plan was to hurt them. And I didn't see enough of it in the first half. I think Illing Jr. barely got on the ball in the first half. I would have liked to see him be on it a little bit more. I think we were still doing a few things quite well, which was occasionally we would attack the space in the corners over their flanks after they press us because you know, you barely need to watch much of Atalanta to realize that they attack through the flanks. Mm -hmm. Milik, I thought, should have been used making more of those moves and then trying to play him as a target rather than just do it straight up the middle where he was getting swarmed every mm -hmm. time. You're making it too easy. Try and isolate him on one defender and make him make those corner runs to try and hit him just to gain that field position. But these are all adjustments I was hoping and expecting we would make going into the second half. So ultimately, you're nil-nil. There are lanes and avenues for us to attack there. Let's hope we get it right in the second half. We get to the second half. Ten minutes in. 
is what it takes. And this goal is this goal is all Illing Jr. All right, like yep, he wins that ball, okay, and he goes down. He could gets stay up. down, mm-hmm. but he gets up immediately, and he's thinking, "I'm going at that D man." I'm attacking it. And he does. Rabio makes a nice overlapping run, gives him the option, stays on side, okay, by a full body. They still have to check. Um, full body, mm-hmm. stays on side, takes it right to the goal line. Low hard cross, back post, perfect. Gets bobbled by the D. That's a hard clearance for a D man to try to make. Where are you Falls put to it? Illing, and he hammers it home. First goal, first professional goal, becomes the third English scorer for Juventus in Serie A. And I got a lot of flack for that because people were firing John Charles, uh, Liam Brady, all, all Welch, everybody. All Welch. Now, guys, that goal. Illing. Unbelievable. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Like, he plays it so much differently than what we see from Kostic. And that's why I think the changeup is big and you need to see it more, right? Let's get your thoughts on that goal, boys. Homer? Yeah, it's so nice seeing someone gets fouled and has the opportunity to run forward and he does it rather than lie down and look for a foul. I think we kind of got used to it even from, you know, the Pjanic days where they were always, you know, asking for calls and preferring the foul over trying to keep attacking. And that's what you get because Atalanta weren't expecting that too. Then great pace off the mark. Uh, Rabio with a good movement behind him stays on side. That I- I'm happy it fell to Ealing in the end and he got to score that because he deserved it. Another youngster from the Primavera scores uh, ahead of Miretti, I might say. Um, just happy. And I-, I mean, bursting with emotions. Uh, I-, I didn't thought we could win this match away at Atalanta, very tough one, and that goal gave me like a huge relief. And thoughts of going forward are just don't let up, don't let them attack you, don't let them get into the area. Keep you, you were doing fine, you were playing good, and now you have the luxury of substitutions. Because, like you said earlier, the, the plan was there, the players weren't the right one to perform the plan to attack Atalanta. But now you have the opportunity to bring those guys in, bring in Chiesa, bring in Dushan, have some more speed some more bone control, even putting Kostic. And it worked out. I was happy. I was really happy with that goal. Yeah, it was, that it was goal, baby to see. That goal had everything that we wanted this team to do. One, don't give up on a play. Don't just call for a foul. Didn't happen. Two, attacking movements, right? Different, like a Rabio overlapping way on the left, Ailing Jr. then going, you know, going to the penalty spot. Everything was in, and then you know, a youngster scoring, obviously, but it had everything that we've that we've been asking for Juventus to do to do in the attacking phase, and they did it. Zero complaints with it. Loved it. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, it's just that difference in Illing Jr. and how he plays versus mm-hmm. Kostic and how he plays it. Plays that position stuck, and we notice this instantly when Illing Jr. comes into games because he's. He's looking to get inside the area. He mm-hmm. is always looking to get inside that area. Kostic is quite content staying on the outside, crossing the ball in. It, it's it's just it's it's quite different. Kostic, I think, needs to implement more of that in his game. He's got a great strike when he does yep. choose to hit the ball. He can hit the ball. He just got to put himself in that scenario more often. So. Mm-hmm. Great goal there, great Ealing one on one. What's that? Ealing. Ealing is very good in one-on-ones. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I mean, he turns really quickly. Dummies is better than Kostic has it. Better than Cordrado now. Cordrado was once great at it. Uh, but I'm really impressed with his one-on-ones. Yeah. He's just so fast. He's just so fast. It's uh, it's crazy yeah. pace. Omar, and who's when he gets a step over, there? he's going the feet. It's wild. Who's, Omar, who's on your who's t-shirt? The man? Yeah. Who's the man? Symphony yeah. X. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. American band. Oh, all right. No. All right. no. <laughs> now, anyways, 74th minute, great stop from Tech. 
hmm. on a long range hit from uh, Coop Milers. From Tech was kick. strong this game. It's got to be said. Uh, he was strong when he needed to be. Um, 88th minute. Vlaovic, after entering the game, has a chance to seal it. I was a little bit choked he didn't bury this one. Obviously sent through, uh, I believe it was Rabio playing the ball across, mm -hmm. getting him in stride, running onto the goalie. Puts it a little close to Sportiel. I was pretty upset. These are the opportunities. I think a top striker's got to kill a game off. But okay. go ahead. Strong foot. Sort of moving away from goal. Goalie did well to close him down. Defender was pushing him that way, but I still fully agree. Got to find a way to put that in the back of the net. Well, yeah. You have to. He's shooting when he doesn't have the angle. Like, Correct. you have to be aware of that. That's part of being a top striker. He needed to mm -hmm. carry it in further. Straighter, he shot yeah, too we'll, we'll soon. Yep. And he have, shot have too another early. thing. And have another thing in your arsenal than just blasting it towards yeah. the wall. You could have easily <laughs> rolled it to the far corner. That would have been more accurate and more chance of goal. Maybe caught the, the goalkeeper uh, surprise. I actually don't think so. I don't, I don't, I think even if he puts that thing on the carpet, going back post, Sportello's there because Sportello's cheating. It's almost mm -hmm. like he already knew that was coming. Up. And that's why I think Vlaovic, if you're running onto that and you see where he's standing, you don't have going. that shot. He doesn't have that shot. And I he's, he he's got to take it in a bit sooner. I watched it on replay because I was pretty hard on him on the watch along. I think he's got to he's got to carry it a little bit further in that play. He's got to get that keeper out a little bit more to give himself something, or get the keeper. Yeah, it's to one of those. It's one of those moments that if if Atalanta find a way to draw the game, you go back to it, and that's mm -hmm. where we yeah. have won it. But, yeah, but eventually we didn't. So, and yeah. it did score beauty afterwards. So. And it's not for lack of trying from Giovedi, the referees. Uh, chance of uh getting this game tied because we saw five minutes given for stoppage time which i thought was high in the first place he added another minute which turned into another five minutes but uh the only spot we had to come up big was tech making another diving save short side on a zappa costa rip from range and then that hit, we, that hit the post he had it covered but it hit the post was it post? I thought he got hands to it. Yeah. No, no, no it hit, the, hit post. the post. Well, he was there anyways. Uh, so He was there. Yeah, he covered Animesh, it. Animesh, Dovani he gets the salute. Absolutely, he gets the salute. Okay, clown show. 98th minute, counter from Chiesa and Vlaovic. And now, this is the thing with Vlaovic. You go from a high percentage opportunity where you're like, okay, man, just carry it an extra foot and then slot it even short side or something like, or just take a step by the keeper, like force him out. But then you come to this counter where the pass is kind of behind him. He's got to slow down from Chiesa. Chiesa backs off the defense. He's wide open. He's yelling for the ball. And he just slots a beautiful hit into the top I'm going corner, top cover. short side. Mm. One hell of a finish. And he does it in the face of discrimination from the clowns in Bergamo. Beautiful goal, everybody. Absolutely beautiful yep. goal. We got to talk. Okay, first, you guys could talk about the finish, talk about the goal, talk about Dushan as a whole. We saw it earlier in the chat. He looks different these past two games. Can we agree on that? Yeah. yeah. Aside the whole from game the goals. Just, yeah, do you just want to go through the whole game or just that goal? I just want to go through this Dushan. goal right now. Yeah, so the one thing what Dushan has done better both games he's come in is his hold up play. I, I, that didn't really happen with the goal, but his hold up play, you know, he's not he's fighting through fouls to get the ball distributed. And it can be argued that that finish was actually easier than the breakaway finish because he, he has time to sit, see you later up. He has time to uh, set his feet and pick the corner. He has the whole net to shoot at. Uh, the keeper was off his line, which, you know, made him open to be chipped, basically chipped over the top, but, uh, beautiful finish. Lo I was, I was going bananas at seven 30 or eight o'clock in the morning. Woke everybody up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Omar talk about that finish. 
I, I was happy because, I mean, Chiesa slowed down. He didn't sprint all the way because he was looking for Dushan to score it. And then Kostic came in a trailing one, run, so actually three on two. We had options. He could have passed it. I thought the, the shot was quite surprising to me and the mm. goalkeeper. Uh, but he did bury it, you know, right where he, where he needed to because it was short, uh, the closer post to him. So it was a beautiful shot, sort of a cheap, a curler into the top corner, just, you know, in your face to very. I mean, you could have stopped the game. You chose to go on and you deserve to have a goal celebrated in front of your face. And I loved how he chased Dushan afterwards to stop him. Yeah, the uh, <clears throat> the referee chasing Vlaovic. Okay, I've never seen, I've never seen that. I've never seen a referee run next to a player during his celebration, like so intent on just keeping tabs on what he's doing. That's I've never true. seen it. That's that's true. Uh, maybe I just have never paid attention to it. Before. FIFA 94. That's where you. Uh, FIFA 94. Right. Yeah. It was it was wild. It was it was the strangest thing. Okay. And anyways, he gets a card. We have uh, Dan Kata coming in here. Will Syria address the race chance at Vlaovic? Yes. Will he get the card taken away? Similar to Luka? They've left themselves no choice but to do so. They yeah, have to because been they're setting themselves up. And if you don't think. Now, the Juve fan base as a whole, and even Juventus, in theory, should be letting things known. Juve's going to do it. Juve's going to do it. Um, so, Serie A has already issued saying they're going to intervene. Yeah, they've already stepped in, yep. So, fully expect it. Yeah. Aldo's comment about the confidence. That's the Dushan we were seeing second half when we mm -hmm. first got him. Strong, right. a swagger, confidence. It's the band-aid. It's the hand bandage. He's a different guy. Yeah. And a pinky finger wrapped up? Well, that's a little weird. Could be a skateboarding accident, eh, Omar? I don't know. Yeah. But keep that damn bandage on all the time because he's back. Hurt the pinky finger, come back. Turns you into a there monster. There you go. There yeah, you go. Those were actually two great goals. He's oh, yeah. Goals. Both of I them mean, were that, bangers. That's the, that's the douche we were looking for. Not... not some tapping guy who needs to get in the best <clears throat> position possible. Just have a good chance and make something out of it. Definitely uh, Benzema vibes for sure with the bandaging. Now, going back to the league and what they have to do and what I was getting to with Juventus is going to obviously take, they should be taking their shots carefully and mm -hmm. subtly at how they let it be known what's going on. It started with the congratulatory tweet to napoli which i found amazing okay um because we know we don't get that treatment in return which is great they need to do the same thing with things like that not set themselves up for fines or anything like that but little subtle hints and shots and digs at inconsistencies okay what disgusts me the most out of the whole situation while players credit to Coop Miners, De Bruyne, Zapata, uh, I believe Zapacosta as well. These guys doing everything they can to tell the crowd to stop. Okay. Mm -hmm. The referee did initiate the announcement over the PA system as well. Okay. And added one minute of extra time. All of that mm -hmm. took place. Mm-hmm. You cannot have your coach, okay? And I'm going studs up on Gasparini, that little mm -hmm. friggin' clown, okay? Come out after the game and say, we must realize uh, what isn't and what is racism, saying that essentially Zingaro is, oh, we have players... No, we have players that are uh, yeah, that come from where Vlaovic comes as well. You have to realize what the difference between discrimination uh, is and isn't. Oh my God, man. Oh my God. Okay. There are players that are also black on the same teams that their fans uh, put out monkey chants and whatnot. It doesn't all of a sudden mean that, oh, it's just thrown out there. It's not race or whatever. Use... 
your friggin' head. And guys like Gasparini are, and when they make stupid comments like that, is the exact reason why this shit is allowed to continue. It's it's wild to me. It's absolutely wild to me. Gasparini yeah. gets an yeah. epic, epic fail. Okay, yeah. epic, epic yeah, fail Infantino. on his post match comments. Homer, even Infantino addressed it directly this incident and mentioned Dusan Vlahovic. I mean. How many times do you see uh, FIFA's chairman, you know, intervene in specific events and mention specific player names? That's pretty rare. I mean, the racism in Italy has gotten to a point where it annoys even FIFA. And they, I believe they intend to intervene to some degree or ask for clarifications from the FIGC or from UEFA about what they're going to do about it. Now, two points. One, I get what Doveria was trying to do. He was trying to avoid uh, what happened at Juve Inter. You know, the ad, the outburst afterwards, running to the crowd, and the players come to defend, and you have a cross suddenly. I get that that what he was trying to do, and maybe by the players, our players went to Dushan and tried to stop him from running towards the crowd. They would just celebrate with us, don't go to the crowd. Uh, but I can't blame him. I mean, I've never been in that situation. I assume... You want nothing more than to go and tell all of them to shut up after you scored. Um, that's one thing. So I wouldn't be too harsh there on the very... The rest of the match, it was abysmal. Uh, what was the second thing I wanted to say? I can't remember. Go on, Ant. Gasparini, so, oh. Gasparini's a tool. That was a completely no, that a wrong clown. thing to yeah, say. Yeah. Allegri upset me as well. He upset me as well in terms of saying that, and I get what he's trying to say in terms of, well, you know, we need to ignore it or whatever and move beyond and stuff. But no, you don't need to ignore it. Um, it needs to be treated exactly how Juventus did treat it. So I'm done in the year 2023 hearing about any club that's taken part in Serie A not having the technology to capture the people that are doing that and issue bans. So I'm definitely going to have eyes on Atalanta and see what comes from it. I expect nothing. I expect no bans to be dished out. This is not the first time that they have done it as well. But everybody this season is so quick to jump on Juventus for absolutely everything. You bet your ass I'm keeping receipts. And this is going to be one of those moments. We got oh. friggin' crickets. Crickets. When Juventus came out, immediately naming two people and banning two people. Immediately. Oh, that's not good enough. What's the matter with you guys? Whatever. Two weeks later, 171. Crickets. Crickets. Day, everybody. Okay? Day. That, that was my second point. I mean... Let Atalanta have done nothing. I don't think they have issued any posts on social media. I mean, Juve were very quick to cooperate with the authorities, give names, give whatever they want. And like you said, crickets, we hear nothing about it, not from Atalanta, not from the FIGC. So I'm still waiting. Let's see if that club that everyone loves and just adore because they work financially great, uh, what they do when racism comes knocking. From their own family. everybody laughs at me at the beginning of the season when i say atalanta is a clown show and i've called them a clown show for years and years and years and everyone's like oh but they're you know they were in your their clown show so i'm gonna put that out there first so there was a lot to cover there i'm gonna try and do it really quick so we can move on to other things i thought the referee had an okay game up until the 96th minute i didn't really have an issue he's controlled it there was there wasn't a lot of cards handed out uh rabio got one so people had an issue with that but Overall, the game was under control. Nothing was getting at a hand. I thought he did a good job making mostly the right calls, no issues. 95th minute, he calls to the sidelines to add one more minute. And I was running the main yesterday, and it's 97, 98. There was no reason to add those other minutes. So, Omar, you brought up a good point where he's chasing Dushan around to make sure he doesn't go to the crowd. That's on him because that whistle should have been blown two minutes before yeah. the first time Juventus cleared it out. So 
good game from the referee, but he really lost control of it in that last couple minutes. Uh, the next one, great point about the technology in the stadium, Al. Never going to happen. What are we even talking about here? We can't even get one monitor working in Bologna. We're going to get cameras in betting mode? Come on. You're crazy. Um, I saw people yesterday on Twitter. Now, we don't, we're we not professional commentators and we're not professional psychologists, but people putting levels to racism to me is funny. Like, oh, this type of racism is worse than this type of racism. You can't. I, I understand that, you know, there's different uh, backgrounds but between each one. You know what I mean? Like diff- until you until the league says none of it is OK, you're not going to get rid of it. And people in North America saying, well, it's bad, but it's not the same as another type of racism that happened. Like, are you it's are you are you serious? The so, stupidity, anyways. the stupidity I see. That comes out of these situations. I can't even believe somebody was putting levels to it. I couldn't. It's because they can't take the clubs associated away from the goddamn scenarios that are taking Mm -hmm. place. They are. There are people out there that are unable to do that. They walk through life with their fucking blinders on, on anything Juve's involved in. Okay. The bottom line is, Zingaro, Gypsy, is a term used to discriminate against a group of people. Period. Which is, is racism. Period. So right that is sure. racism. Which is a type of racism. Now all of a sudden you want to say levels to that. Are you stupid? You've yes, got it. They are. You've completely have, and I don't usually. You know, come right out like that. But people that are doing that on social media are, in fact, idiots. If you're trying yes. to play levels to they ate paint chips as a kid, discrimination um, and whatnot. Now the okay? last one, the last one, yeah, we we're fully agreeing on that. The last one is your comments about Allegri's comments. Yes. As a coach, I think he was just saying you, you almost have to play through that. You got you you have to almost focus and play through that. Wouldn't even know what it's like to play through. Couldn't even put myself in that position. I think that's what he was trying to get at. Max, to your point, Al, maybe don't even say that. But I think that's what he was getting at is to say, you almost have to like quiet out the crowd. and, and Like I said, and, I know what he's trying to say. Yeah, You just got to be so careful because yeah, of the subject. Careful. And I yeah. think ultimately how he chose to say it Fair enough. didn't come out the best. And I think, Fair enough. you yeah. know, to say yeah, I mean, we need to ignore, you should never talk about racism and gotcha. say we need to ignore. Like, no, 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 yep. no, no. That's the wrong choice of words. Talk about yeah, it from a I game standpoint. Like we need to get through the game and then we need to address things Correct. and and dish out uh, punishments and whatnot. So mm-hmm. at, at the end of the day, it's not like Max is at fault for anything here. Um, it's an unfortunate end to what was a good game. A good second half. Yeah. yeah. Good second half. Yeah, they they always bait them. The the media baits them into those type of reactions. I mean, you can only say one thing when asked about it. Racism is horrible. Get it out of every football pitch in the world, and that's about it. That's what I expect Max to say. I don't expect him to put himself in Dushan's shoes and how he would have reacted and blah, blah, blah. No, racism Mm -hmm. is fucking horrible. Stop with it. That's it. That's what I expect Max to say. Now, Fair one enough. other thing I just want to get out of the way before we get to all the good stuff after the match and everything is Napoli in general, okay? And the reason I come into this is because it's a lot of their fans that are Thank choosing you. to, uh, and it's been all year long, trying to like just jump on our grave at every chance, every little media headline, everything, period, and whatnot. All of a sudden, even the league... You know, trying to say, oh, this is a model uh, to follow and everything. And De Laurentiis as president. All, like, you're getting one title, okay? And all of a sudden, it's like they are the be-all, end-all. Almost like we forget. And naming De Laurentiis as this president that all clubs should be on. I saw somebody post on there that uh, Juventini should be looking for this. And, and trying to attack Agnelli and whatnot. Now, to say Agnelli has not made errors is one thing. 
But to try and put the two on the same level for me is absolutely laughable, okay? Um, and how quick people are to forget about the fact that Napoli has ruined some careers in a term in terms of financially because their players were being played, paid with friggin' food stamps. I could succeed at a club and do quite well if I wasn't paying my players and uh, giving model. them food stamps, all right? Uh, their stadium is, it's awful. I've seen fan cams from there and there's seats that I'm like, that's number one, unsafe. Number two, you can barely see anything as a friggin' Gourva's hanging out over top of you. Number, number three, okay? De Laurentiis has screwed players over, tried to screw them over because of them wanting to go on national duty. How quick people are to forget at how absolutely ruthless he has been with his own. And now we're talking about a plus Valenza. A plus Valenza, oh, that's why you got a model to follow with what they've done with their resources. Number one, the reason Juve made so many resources through all those years was because of the work Agnelli did in large part, okay? How what we did with them and maybe missing the mark and COVID, hello, that everybody wants to shoot them for CR7 coming in and everything. COVID was a huge part in fucking that up. Stop it with this knobbly. This is the be all end all. I've had it. I won't stand for it. It's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. As far Especially. as I'm concerned, this is a skid mark on the title winners list. And that's all it's going to be. Have your fun now. Okay. Congratulations. You fans still show time and time again. You have no idea how to win. And I'm going to finish on this. While mm -hmm. Maradona as a player was fantastic and nobody could take anything away about what he accomplished on the pitch, I question your morals when you make him out to be a god. I question your morals when you're making him out to be a god. Yeah, even going as far as making, you know, there's a reason why Platini isn't, you know, at the same caliber as Del Piero, just for the person he is. And even though he didn't do that while playing all the corruption at FIFA and UEFA and blah, blah, blah. I mean, we know about it. It's not a secret. And we don't talk about him the same way as we talk about other legends who have a clean conscience. That's just the, the truth of it. And, you know, it annoys me what, what you just said because of Juve did work that way up until Ronaldo. Even when we signed Higuain, we first saw Pogba for world, then world record. And you were just, you know, making small deals, free transfers, and we had none of that. No one could congratulate us for the way we were operating. And they were just looking for other ways to, you know, make us little by winning titles and stuff. And I'm actually shocked with second place. I have no idea how we got there. Not a clue. <laughs> I'm looking at him and how we were complaining so much this season. How are we second place in this league? How are we second place in this five. league when we are five wins, eight draws, and 14 losses when we concede? We're going to get to the numbers. My last <laughs> thing on this, into Omer's point. Now all you have and all you hear about is everybody trying to discredit Juve's run and all this, which is no, the really biggest care. piece of bullshit out there, okay? Mm -hmm. When you are going to say that you won while Milan and Inter were down and whatnot, that does not mean there was not competition there. It was just different clubs. It's not on us ultimately to worry about them and make sure that they're the ones competing and now all of a sudden you're discrediting it. That's absolute nonsense. All right? Absolute nonsense. Nine in a row, you'll never see again in your lifetime. All right? So it is what it is. But uh, to anybody out there that continues to try and discredit what we accomplished, simple as that. Yeah, I think the best way, before we move on, I think the best way what we're going to do is go back to the show where tal and joe were on tal the president of is he the president of empire state club tal tal yeah we're gonna I, i'll find that clip of him and his thoughts on all this it was fantastic it was, good, 
It was a very Beautiful good summary, rant. and I'll clip that, and we'll send that out from the main. Huge thanks to uh, Ricardo here from JCD Melbourne Official Fan Club, GG Buffon in Australia. I have massive respect for there? all the Australian fan base, okay, because that 3 a.m. comes quick, and that is like the standard time <laughs> for them to take in these games. For any of you who saw my uh, Macho Man uh, clip with the uh, coffee in the big time, yeah, that uh, was legit. I crushed three espressos and a coffee before coming on uh, live, and then I was drinking water for the show. Um, yeah, it was needed. And that first so half, basically, if I didn't have those espressos, probably wasn't going to make it. So basically, our 3 o'clock kickoffs, they're watching the game at 5 in the morning. They have to watch the games at... 5 3 to 5 a.m. is like their standard, yeah. So credit what to them. Because I had so many that were uh, chiming in on my uh, Macho Man uh, clip there saying, buddy, I watch at 3 a.m. and then I go to work. And I'm like, respect, respect. Yeah. I, no I needed to go try and find another 45 minutes of sleep. Now, <laughs> now, man of the match. Let's get to man of the match. We got a little sidetracked, but I really hate yeah. when Juve Sorry. gets attacked and... I need to make a stand. I need to make some, you know, I just need to make those statements. I need to get it off my chest because it pisses me off so much. Mm. You should have heard him in the green room, everybody. <laughs> well, hey. Anyways. That's another thing with the memberships. We're all going to be in the green room essentially because we're going to have a WhatsApp chat group for everybody mm -hmm. that's in. I believe it's tier two there. So memberships, you, you got to sign that. up for through You would have heard that unfiltered. Yeah. I got I got the unfiltered of that. It's <laughs> okay. In the green room. The green room sessions are also going to be out for members as well. A lot of singing, starting soon. A lot of, yeah, Anthony, your man of the match. My man of the match, uh, I thought it was pretty easy to choose. Uh, I saw a lot of other people coming out with their names. I was like, oh, maybe. I don't know. I have uh, Illing Jr. and Tech were notable mentions for me. For me, Rogani was the man of the match. One person who executed his job for 90 plus minutes. Gave it to him. All right, Rugani. Mm -hmm. I like that yep. shout. I thought he was solid. Absolutely solid. Omer, who was your man of the match? Rugani is a great shout. Iring. Iring was actually in most of the, you know, sites that do these ratings. He was the man of the match. Uh, I think I want to give it to, to Rocatelli. Okay. Yeah. I, I haven't heard a lot of people call his name, but okay. Why? What did you yeah, see? Because I, uh, I saw like an extra two lungs. I mean, the amount of work this guy does, even off the ball, just closing lanes, joining every attack, then coming back, snuffing out a lot of attacks before they even reach, you know, our area. The defenders have to deal with it. He cuts okay. a lot of those, and I thought he was. He did phenomenal defensive work in this yeah. match. But so, Rugani is a great shot. I could easily go with Rugani too. I had it between Illing, Rabio, Loka, and Rugani. Those were my four in this game that I had it between. Illing Jr. for me, that was a play that was could easily, he could have just trotted back to try and get goal side one not. He fought for that ball. That was a critical moment, ultimately leading to us getting the lead. Did become the game-winning goal. Rabio and Locatelli put in a ton of work. And we were on the defensive for a lot of that game. It, it's really tough for me. I almost want to go with uh, Rabio, to be honest. Uh, but uh, on the match day live... Or the watch line. I went with Ailing Jr. I'm going to stick with Ailing Jr. I'm going to give it to him uh, for finding the decisive uh, moment uh, to see UV okay. through. So, to be honest, though, credit to uh, that's a good bunch when you're picking four out of your starting lineup. Very, very strong. I thought Di Maria was good. Um, Pogba. Pogba looks Pogba. Pogba so good. Looks good. Two games in a row. He came in, looks yeah. good. From game, from game to game, he looks a bit less rusty. Yeah, he just he's growing. He's just growing, and here he is against uh, a tough, a tougher opposition for him that he's been able to get in with. He looks so good. If he would have been able to latch on to that cross from Di Maria, he was on his off foot, left foot. Oh my god, I was yep. ready to lose my mind. 
I wanted yeah. that for him so bad, but uh, Pogba is looking very, very good. We can only judge him when he is in the lineup and playing. I've always said that, okay? Injury nonsense aside and all this, it's unfortunate, but he looks good. And, hey, Sevilla's coming up. Is he ready to get a start? I don't think he's there yet. Obviously, Max no. is going to face that question. And we'll have to just wait to see when he gives us an actual report of where he's at. But he just looks good. Looks really, really I, I, good. I got something quick before we move on. I said this in the Lecce post-game match. Now, I said this Atalanta game was the most important game of the year. Now, I, I sort of switched that. This was a must-win. And I can't remember the last time we won a must-win. And we did it. Yeah. Like, what, Nantes? Maybe or one of the year like I can't remember a game where it's like we really need to win this one. Like we didn't win last year against Lazio Sassuolo, but this was one that we needed, and the boys came through. Big yeah, game. it was a big one. Yeah, it gives us yeah, it gives us a lot of breathing room for Cremonese between the two Sevilla games, mm-hmm. and both Lazio and Roma lost. So and Atalanta who were right behind, and uh, so it looks like the top four is aimed to be. Napoli, Juve, Milan, Inter. Four games left. We have Empoli and Cremonese. Then Milan and Udinese. So it's very doable. We can even stay in second place. I mean, even a draw against Milan and we're staying in second place. I have I have the top... I have two to position two to five's last four games. If we want to get into it, we don't have to get into all the games. But I think between Juve and uh, Inter... Juve and Milan, we have the uh, the easiest of the last four games. Inter has that extra Coppa Italia in there. But, you know, we have, you know, the magic number for us against Milan is eight. And then for Inter, it's 10. And for Lazio, it's 11. So magic numbers, for those who don't know, points gained by us or points lost by those teams means we lock up top four. So we only need to I really actually need think, I actually think Lazio has the easiest one. Lazio they, they has need to play Le- Lecce, Udinese, Cremonese, Empoli. Sorry, you are correct. That's right. Yep. And they have no European matches. So, but they but they tend <clears throat> to clip their own wings every season at some point, and it looks mm-hmm. like it's happening. It's happening now. Ofer, you must have joined just a tad too late. Uh, if you rewind it a bit, you'll hear our thoughts on uh, that for sure. Uh, everybody. I want to remind everybody that's with us right now, drop a like on this video, okay? We got about 54 with us live time right now. Let's get those likes mm-hmm. up. I want to say another massive thank you to Ricardo here. Another super Ooh. chat uh, comment. Here at Juventus heading back to the U.S. About to be announced at any moment now. Three cities. Three cities, okay? Uh, we're just waiting for that uh, final announcement, uh, the official announcement. Now, talked about locking up second place or breathing room on trying to lock up uh, second place and ultimately just top four. I was confident before this. Uh, With this now, I I don't have concerns about top four. I see Juve finishing in top four. We look at our schedule. It is a favorable one, I think. Uh, Mm -hmm. You take away the Milan game. I think it'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. All right. Now, in terms of this team overall, it's been a wild season. We've gone back and forth, up and down. It's hard to really know what to make of this team. Mm-hmm. I Now, thank you. Big shout out to the Juventus official fan club, Vancouver. Pietro Nardone has actually uh, put me in. That is the fan club I belong to. Um, he put me in the group chat there. It's amazing. I love it. I love the discussion, the discourse, and just everybody's thoughts and opinions and they the after this game defending uh allegri and whatnot just saying i think you know it was uh one of the members there just saying i think we're really missing the mark on how much he's actually done this season Mm -hmm. and i had to sit back there for a while and i heard him out he just said the basic points were who and what team could have probably overcome as much as Juventus this season? 
And number one, it's hard to try and answer that question because you don't know until a team is really essentially put into that scenario. But I think we all feel from a managerial standpoint, you can really respect because it would have been easy to walk away. He asked like, to, and they said no. Apparently. apparently. But it's weird because the big Allegedly. guys didn't really jump in on that one. Like, Mirko didn't jump in on that one when I asked him. So I don't really know about that. Fair enough. But I don't know. I just... Regardless. I respect Max being there. And I can say there's probably not another manager I would have wanted through those circumstances. And that's mm -hmm. just because while we were getting some excuses from Max in terms of the roster, which... Would be frustrating if you're banking on Di Maria, Pogba, Chiesa, and whatnot, and they're just not available to you. However, different excuses from other coaches lead me to believe he would have been the probably the best suited guy for this moment, this scenario. Mm -hmm. However, again, when you're trying to make sense of this team, 21 clean sheet victories, second to only Barcelona at 25 and Manchester United at 23. Third best defense in the league. So we don't concede a bunch. Yet we have a terrible record when conceding. What is it? Five wins, eight draws, 14 losses? That is correct. Got put through the ringer with these circumstances and the plus Valenza nonsense and whatnot. But we will we were awful before that penalty too. And we have clear roster issues as well. What do you make of this season? Ultimately, like when we're looking at gauging guys and how they did their job and even the manager and how he's done his job, this is a weird season to try and actually make sense of this club and what we have in front of us. When you're looking at numbers and they're not making sense with things and we've had this penalty and everything and what do you what do you make of this year? Some are saying second place Tussle Romer. Europa League semifinal. What are we complaining about? Like mm -hmm. with these clear roster issues. What do you make of this team? Omer. Look, okay. It's divided into two parts. Mm -hmm. First of all, what you said about Allegri being the guy when that type of stuff happens. Yeah, he's probably the right guy and the guy I want if we suddenly get points deducted mid-season. Um, having said that, that's not something you can expect or get ready to, you know, to deal with ahead of time. I mean, before season starts, you don't expect anything like that to happen to any team. And I don't know who's the last team who got points deduction during the season, but it's I believe it's quite unprecedented. Uh, so I can tell you who exactly I want to be there. I believe Max did what he could. Um, so credit to him for that, and I really thank him for that. On a sporting level, I think this team is still underperforming and can do better. Even with this crop of players that we have right now, it might need some tweaks here and there and you know just sub out some old players but i still believe they could have done better and yeah napoli had a great season great season on the pitch but they're still 17 points ahead of us right now and we might not have won this season but we could have been you know five points away which give even a better indication of where we are so i still think the team has underperformed uh, in terms of playing style. Uh, but Europa League is probably where we need to be right now. And to be honest, I prefer winning Europa League than dropping out in the final 16 in the Champions League. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, reminder to everybody, get your Storm the Barn questions in right now. We have time for a few. Ed? Yeah, hey, this hey. is a season where it doesn't, it doesn't do anyone any good to have a firm agenda on anything. And I am talking right to Lou on this one, you know, right, right at him, you know, with the, with the Rabio thing, Rabio had a good season. 
with the Allegri agendas in and out. I just think there was so much going on that everybody, players, manager, club, there were so many up and downs that, it, like you said, there's not really one thing you can put it on. Okay, You can kind of put on Max at the beginning of the season where his tactics out of line, but there was a lot of injuries. And then there was um, – do, uh, you have to rest some players, then you have the World Cup break, and then you come back and you go on a run, and then there's minus 15 points. Okay, well, for all for all of that, I agree that Max was the right guy to handle it. But as a whole, to Omer's point, the team at the end of the at the end of this season, you're still going to say we were X number of points off of first place. And Europa League is where that is the level is the is the benchmark for this team. Really, there's, I, I, it's it's I don't know. You can't for me. I just I, I didn't stick to any agendas. It's just I hope for the best for each player. Players coming back from injury. We wish Pogba could have came back sooner. That was a whole situation. Di Maria was injured. Vlaovic was injured. Kies is coming back from an ACL. There was just so much going on that you can't say, Max, you were right or wrong. Pogba, you're right or wrong, right? There were so yeah. many things affecting the season positively and negatively that just let's just get to the end of it. Hopefully, there's no points yeah. deduction at the end, and we can just get into the summer market. You know, hopefully, we, we come out of this with with one trophy. And there are just, yeah. let's just get into the specific summer. moments. There are just specific moments in this season that are very embarrassing, and sure. I was super furious. Losing five one to Napoli was was just horrible. I, I can't. I don't remember the last time you've considered five goals in one match. And, you know, losing to Maccabi Haifa away in the Champions League, that was a tough pill to swallow. Losing to Monza twice. Home, you know, I'm, there are very bad moments that I won't remember. I don't, you know. I don't want what I'm about to say to be mistaken, okay? It will be. For my stance. But... Max has to bear the weight of one of the most embarrassing losses to Napoli, of course. Mm-hmm. Yet yeah. Bremer played a game I have never... I, one of the worst yeah. games I've ever seen from a center back period. But Max has to bear the weight of that. That's why he's the manager. That's every manager's job. But that's, in a sense, you know... Who's he going to bank on over Bremer in a game against Napoli? What are we talking about here? And it, it, it's tough. Like, yeah, we could get frustrated. We could say, you you can't lose to Napoli 5-1, which I agree with. You can't. You And his record in big games is not strong. But there's moments here and there that have gone through. And now, especially towards the end, where you start seeing an impact that a guy like Pogba, Pogba makes and can make. And a Di Maria that's been hit and miss over the past, I don't know how many weeks now. Um, that's pretty tough because he doesn't have a whole bunch outside of that. The flip side to this and why I find myself going back and forth, okay, on this year and how to make sense of it is this. When Max Allegri came out, after the defeat to Inter and said, we used the wrong approach. Mm -hmm. That has been our approach throughout. Let's be serious. Every time. That is our approach throughout. So when he comes out and has only pinpointed in that match, yet you have a poor record in big games over two years, when we concede, our record is abysmal, and you're playing in that approach, that's what makes me question everything and not feel truly comfortable moving forward, despite me having some sympathy for some big guys letting them down in big moments and a roster that does need help. Overall, I'm not locked in that this approach is exactly what we need. And now I totally understand fans that would be on the other side saying, you've got the third best defense in the league. 
You've won 21 games at a clean sheet, only short of Man U and Barca. And you've had a lot of key guys injured for a large part of the season. And you've had a points penalty. I can totally grasp all of that. And it's a strong argument. However, for me, personally, I'm not sold <clears throat> on that approach, game in, game out, right. being the same. That's just me. But it's very difficult season to try and judge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my point. There's too many. There's too many. There's too many individual points that you can that people are blowing up. Like, well, like this one little point that you know that's a it's bigger than it is. There, there's so much in this stew. You know, does Max Allegri deserve another season? No. No. When you look at when you look at the numbers, the overall numbers, it hasn't gotten any better on the numbers yeah. alone. Because I, I don't look only at this season numbers. Mm -hmm. I, you have to factor in the previous Correct. season where the injuries right. weren't that bad and we didn't have points deduction. We still witnessed, you know, much of the same, actually, that we've seen this season. It's not about uh, the players we have. It's about the attitude they take onto the field. It's about hearing the same excuses over and over again. We were this and we were that, but it doesn't get fixed. So... At some point, you gotta blame the coach, and that's why he's the coach. I mean, he should get the blame for the team performance. So, yeah, I don't think he deserves. Well, deserves is pretty harsh. I don't think he just. You know, I don't want him next season on the bench because I believe you even need to move forward right now. And with Max, I feel like we're treading water here, just you know, staying in the same place, not moving, not backwards and not forward. The, yeah. His record in big games, I, I got it. We have to get that. I, I'll reach out. Maybe someone on our team can reach out to his <coughs> on, on Twitter. His record against Let me help you. Sorry, a big lot, games. Lost a it's lot, won a few. That's that's the record. Yeah. yeah. Five wins, eight draws, 14 losses when we concede one at least one goal. You can't. That we can't alone be that is mentally a weak. We can't be that <laughs> mentally weak. He all can't. of Juve's ethos is being strong mentally. Fino alla fine, all the way to the end. Never give up. Grinta. If you take that out, then it's not. I'm not watching Juventus anymore. Max, yeah. great soldier. He is in the Juventus Hall of Fame. We're gonna put him in there. But he's got to be put to pasture. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, Lex. Thank you. This is why I say. Despite everything that we hear, and you can put the case for him. And there are a couple in the live chat here that say, yes, he deserves another season. For me, I kind of side with you guys. I think it's time uh, to try something else and just move on. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to be clear. I fully understand it's not all max, and it is an all max. But there's that responsibility with being in that chair. And that's what happens. So it's a tough one, though. A very, very tough season for us to try and gauge. And a lot of circumstances that just shouldn't be happening. But here we are. So it'll be interesting to see uh, on uh, the replay and everybody that takes it. Drop your comments in this video on YouTube and whatnot. Let us know your thoughts on Max Allegri. If you think maybe, just maybe, another season. But uh, it's hard to. I think a lot of people are swayed by what happens in media and obviously all the talk over other coaches and flashy football and all this and whatnot, it could easily go very wrong in making mm -hmm. a manager change. Like well, the one thing I say consistently, thank Christ I'm not the one making the decision on the next coach at Juventus. Julie Tolley. So yeah, we got a couple of news highlights real quick before we get yeah. into the store of the barn. Jim Tolley, things are heating up. Apparently, he does yep. have an offer from Juventus. I think we would all welcome that move. We need a true sporting director, period. Mm -hmm. Right now, from the big guys, and obviously this is Fabrizio Romano, even Nicola uh, Schira, he's got an offer from Juve. We wait and see. 
his message at the celebrations with Napoli may be a little cryptic, saying, as long as De Laurentiis is here, you're in good hands and whatnot. Uh, read into it what you will. Ant and I are kind of, I'm still a little hesitant in thinking he's going to leave, but there's a lot of things to think about. Would he use mm-hmm. Juventus as leverage against ADL? That's not going to work out good. Doesn't make sense, but maybe just maybe he's kicking tires in waiting for whatever could happen at Napoli. I don't know, but that would be a big one for Juve, a true sporting director. Okay. Mm -hmm. Need it. Starts there. Other news, Verratti's name being potentially linked. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the chat, yes or no to Verratti, should he become an option for Juventus? Over. I, I think no. I think it's been too long. It's Just, a tough one no. for me, man. It's really hard to say no to Verratti, but I do question the timing. But uh, it's a tough one. And can hang on, I got to answer the question with a question. With Rabio leaving, can Locatelli play that role in Verratti? With Verratti sliding into where Locatelli plays, can Locatelli play the role that Rabio has played? I if don't yes, then think... Verratti no, is a yes. For I him. don't think I don't think Verratti can play as well. The, he's just not this physical defensive guy okay. that we think he is. He's great at breaking out of pressure and stuff, but mm-hmm. defensive wise, we need a Locatelli there. We really need him. Okay. Yeah, I I think I'm I'm on the fence on this one. I don't know. It's a tough one. I think his past is prime. His past is prime. He has tons of injuries every season. Okay. He might, you know, delay some other youngsters getting promoted and playing more and more. Possibly for Jolie or Miretti. You still have Pogba with a with a contract, Lucatel with a contract. I just think, you know, the time has passed. I guess the thing is this. While we were talking the other day. About Sergei Malikovic Savage and using Rovella to potentially bring that value down. I said absolutely not. I don't see a big enough boost from Sergei Malikovic Savage to our midfield. I actually see a bigger boost with Verratti than I would Sergei Malikovic Savage. Verratti, for me, when he's on, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's only three. In terms of the young guys. It's not a He's bad scary. thing if, like, Miretti goes on a loan somewhere. It's not mm-hmm. a bad no, thing. No, it's not really. a bad thing. Fajoli stays around. Locatelli mm-hmm. can cover ground on it. Like, I'm not a immediate low on Verratti. I'm not. And it still would allow Rovella to come in and play a part as well if he doesn't move somewhere. But I think we have other holes to fill. I Before might be on, with the like uh, minority on this one, but uh, I – and maybe just maybe I'm sticking to the fact I've always wanted Verratti to play at Juventus, and I think it's wild that he has never played for a top side in Italy. But uh, I understand mm-hmm. both sides I, of it, but Verratti's... I think he's a choker. I think he's a choker. <clears throat> I mean, I, I've never seen him step up when it really mattered. That's my main issue with him. I mean, yeah, we can point to Italy in Euro 2020, but that's international. That's a bit different. On, you know, club level, I don't know. i never seen him be the best midfielder in like a must-win game. He was in the Champions League final. He's mostly absent, and when he doesn't, he doesn't play too well. That's my opinion. That's what I've seen of him. I again. strongly Wrong. disagree. He is... Okay. He is unreal and in most games in champions league he stands out um i can't get behind that no i i think he's un, he's unreal and what he did for italy is like insane insane when you look at that team or not ah I can't, I can't get behind that but mm. i understand i wouldn't know maybe not wanting him i understand i understand would know I, I barely watch i don't even watch other city teams you want me to watch a team in france no chance no idea storm the board we have time for a couple if Vlaovic goes on a goal-scoring streak last games of the season, does it make it so Juventus are more keen on keeping him or does it make so other clubs are more willing to buy him? To be honest, I think Juve's stance is the same and they don't want to sell him. I haven't They're heard otherwise. Have you guys? 
No, it mainly came out of, you know, other media outside of Italy. And, you know, The Sun and all these newspapers are not very credible. They're known for being, you know, just making mm-hmm. stories up. So I, I think, I'm like you, I think you don't, are not looking to sell him. Was this guy doing a play on words with, they're more keen on keeping him when, and he has a picture of Moisey Ken? Is that, was he doing, is that a little, is that a little pun happening there? If, if so, Maybe. genius. If not, I'm, I'm genius. Uh, yeah, he's not going anywhere. I don't, you, Al, you and I, actually, Omar as well, we've sat here and said, you're on mute again. We've sat, you're on mute. My bad. I'm not saying he's not going anywhere. No. I'm just saying Juve from their side doesn't want to sell. Um, okay. As far as other clubs, potato, potato. sure, if he starts firing, yeah, other clubs are going to be more willing to move in. I would have to say yes. But I don't think... <sighs> right now, I'm still 50-50 on Vlaovic if he stays or goes. Like I think it could go uh, either way. Obviously, we have to wait to see. I fully expect Juve to qualify for Champions League. Then we have to wait for the next set of penalties. By the way, another news tidbit from today. We are going to find out uh, either today or tomorrow what the reasons were for Juve being uh, winning in favor in the Court of Appeals. Mm -hmm. And then we are going to get the next sentence in points. It's probably going to be a reduced points. And then Juve gets to appeal that yet again. So it's going to go into the offseason. And then that has to be decided by June 30th. Write these dates down, kids. Uh, May 31st, which is a Wednesday. God, I hope we make it there and win it, is the Europa League final. So the Europa League final is end of May. Verdict, again, <clears throat> beginning of June. And then we have until the end of June because I think the official City Act calendar finishes June 30th or something. So they have to get all their t- the standings finalized to send to FIFA, uh, UEFA for European competitions. Mazraoui, good enough to be our starting right back. No idea. Homer? Maybe. I've mostly seen him play for Ajax. I barely see him, seen him play for Bayern. So I don't know how he's exactly at the top level. Uh, but he was very good with Ajax. The Dutch league is a bit different. Uh, he's not old, so he has room for improvement. He could be great. He could be awful. I, I, I don't know how to gauge his abilities yet on the top level. Yeah, it's a tough one to uh, gauge at the moment. I mean, <clears throat> right now... The reason he's to looking point, to live is because he barely played. Yeah. So I got I have nothing to go by. <clears throat> Cambiasso, Masrawi, I mean, if we're looking at these guys in comparison, obviously we've seen more of Cambiasso one not, but even you have doubts even there. I've seen less of Masrawi. So for me to say, yeah, it's going to be very, very tough for me to be able to say that. I've seen less of him than I have Cambiaso. You know what I mean? Yeah, and even when we did see him in Ajax and even at Bayern, I mean, he plays in a very different type of league. Making the switch to Italy and being a right back is a lot different than playing Germany or the Netherlands, so I don't know what to expect. If he's suited for that defensive role, or is it just all out attack, Cancelo style? No idea. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Matt saying I like Camiasso from what I've seen. I have as well. I have as well. We've got another uh, storm the barn coming in here. I think this one is from Aldo. There we go. Paul Torres. For left center back, or do you have another preference? I well, we talked about talked Torres about and we talked about the Kulabali rumors. And uh, take your pick; I'd be happy with either one of those two, to be honest. So, yeah, you got yeah. a shot at one of those two. I'm absolutely happy with either one. If I had to pick, mm-hmm. it's still hard. We tried to do that, and Omer and I yeah. had a hell of a time trying to pick one or the other, and. If you had to pick one or the other between Pau Torres or Koulibaly, who would you take? I think it was – I remember I was listening to your show. The guys you show your camera was a pregame, postgame camera, which one it was. And I remember thinking a couple of years ago that Koulibaly was, for me, top two center backs on the planet. Like he yeah. – at Napoli. He was a player I always wanted. He played in the league. He knows the league. 
I haven't seen enough of Paolo Torres, but for me, Koulibaly was up there. Now, I'm not sure what the age difference is right now between the two. I think Koulibaly is older, right? He's getting Koulibaly on in age. 31, I think. Yeah, I think oh, then, he's, then he's in his prime. Then I, yeah, I would, for me, I would take Koulibaly. From what I saw him in the city, I, the guy was a beast. What are we even talking about? Yeah. Yeah, so two, good like point, said, two great points here, actually. Gentoli might be, if he ends up at Juve, might be a good way to bring Koulibaly in. You might be looking at that option. Uh, and Dika on free is, an, is another nice option that I would consider. Yeah. Because either one of those guys would cost money. Yeah. Right now. And My, like, and Dika would be exactly that for me. He would be third on the list, though. I could say that. I could say that, that I would put Pal Torres and Koulibaly uh, ahead. Yeah. Are you guys confident to see Sandro Bonucci play their last season with Juve? Also, what are these Paladino? So, Sandro, we know the situation. Like, he is not going to be... He, he's going to be around another year. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, they're trying to extend it to two games. so they can bring the salary down. Haven't heard a lot about it. And what's interesting enough, too, with all the Gentoli rumors and everything, all contract talks currently immediately postponed i didn't hear that but yeah. take sense. that um, take that for what you will all contract extension talks period whatever immediately put on hold by juventus that adds more fuel to the fire about the potential of gentoli coming in here pretty soon everybody um but the certain ones like this we know Bellucci has an auto renewal. He's not going anywhere. Unless they want to move him in the summer and they want to find a deal, that'll be tough too. But we got a lot of guys coming back too that we covered in the pre-match. Artur, uh, Zakaria, potentially McKinney, uh Kulishevsky, I think Spurs, I'm pretty confident they'll pick him up. But we got a lot of work to do. Uh, Sandro Bellucci, I don't expect. Paladino rumors, I'm not buying into that uh, at all, to be honest, no. right now. So Sandro has possibly he needs four more games or five more games to to have the other renewal. We have six more, potentially seven if we make it through the Champions League to the Europa League yeah. final. So might not even happen. The other kicker is that we've heard that he's already met the criteria. So we're getting co conflicting reports. We don't actually yeah, know if he has games or if he's already met them because we've heard both. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And when I try to get clarification from any of the guys like uh, Romeo or Mirko, whatever, they don't really know. Like it's uncertain at this point. And so, it's not starts. It's appearances, right? Yeah. Hmm. Any thoughts about the Greenwood rumors? Oh, that is a strong no. We talked about oh. that. Like, huge character issues and what like no stay away from this guy period yeah. i never even thought about the character issues but for me just english players coming to city yeah it just doesn't more often than not it just doesn't work yeah. now if a player went from city yeah to england and they come back you know i don't know i just for me i really can't think of one off the top of my head what's well, excelled yeah. Well, Juve and English Abraham, players too, right? Lukaku. Like Illing Jr. became our third to score in Serie A, and nobody could name me the other two. Yeah, everybody was throwing out uh, the typical, uh, you know, uh, John Charles Welsh. Uh, well, not Liam Tomori. Brady. Tomori's Canadian, so that that doesn't count. He's Canadian, so I don't. No, but Chris Smalling, and you have guys. I mean, that are doing better. Uh, Smalling, okay, there's one from United. Yeah, he's. He's been all right. There's one. Keep going. Yeah, Tommy, Tommy Abraham, Lukaku. I said Pogba came from from the Premier League. Pogba, too, Pogba was a junior game, player, but, but Lukaku was a good one. Yeah, okay, fair enough. For one year. Yeah, there were some. Yeah, Abram one yeah. year. Yeah. I don't know. I just. But that's a that's a hard no on on Greenwood. I mean, yeah, he looks talented from what I've seen in Man United. Good shot on both legs, pretty agile, quick. <clears throat> but I mean, the guy was. <laughs> the guy, I mean, he got vindicated 
but he was in court and got suspended by his own club for beating his girlfriend. I mean, Juve, you have enough investigation. Stay away from that type yeah. of stuff. Anna Mesh subs it up wonderfully. No club should take that ticket time bomb on their hands. It's a huge reputational issue. Right now, strong, strong no. Everybody, mm -hmm. we're going to wrap things up here. Okay. Victory Monday, the big thing out of everything. Victory There's Monday. a lot of news. We're going to keep you posted. If you're not following us on Twitter yet or even Instagram, make sure you do so. Okay. We got these guys working overtime on news. What Lou and Omar do is incredible. Okay. 100%. So make sure you follow us there. We're going to get ready. I'm going to have daily update videos leading up to Thursday. Sevilla. Huge one. Real quick, guys. How do you feel about that game? Omar, how do you feel going into that one? We're definitely winning the first one. Definitely winning it. Ant, how do you feel? Uh... Hang on, I got a bit of a stomach ache, so it could be one nothing win. It's the second leg. It's the second leg that concerns me. The away leg. Yeah. We got to get off to a good start. This next one, the home one's going to be critical. Lineups. Got to score more than one goal. Got to score more than yes. one at home. Yes. Okay. Vlaovic, start him Thursday? 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Di Maria or Chiesa? Who do you start? Chiesa. Chiesa. Me too. Illing Jr., Kostic. Kostic. You want Illing Jr., but Kostic will start. But I'm asking you, would you? Would you? No, I'd start I'd start Kostic. Well, uh, right. I'd, I'd start Kostic in Spain for sure. Thursday up on up in the air. I know it's a little bit of I'm a. Okay I wouldn't. It. I wouldn't. I'd be okay with seeing uh, seeing Illing in there on. But Thursday. away, away, I would start Kostic. A so relatively there. rested Kostic might. Be, I mean, it's the experience. It's the you know how mm. big this game is. Maybe throwing Illing into there and he's having a stinker is not good enough. Kostic is a bit more experienced in those types of matches. That's why I would go with him. Is anybody willing to put a prediction out there right now, days ahead of this one? Yep. Sure. Why not? For what? Starting lineup? No. For the score line. 2-0. Uh, 2-1. Two one, Juventus. All right. 2-0, and, and I guarantee there will be a tank top in this day, so you can rest assured. I love Sweet. it. I love it. That's a ticket. I'm feeling pretty optimistic too. Mm -hmm. Scoreline, I'm not going to throw out there, but I believe Juve's getting the job done on uh, Thursday. All right. But like I said, we're going to get you in the uh, daily updates leading up to that one. Thursday, we will bring you a match day live, same time, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. And I might have a watch along for that game. I might. I'm going to try my best. It's always tough during the week. I'm going to try my best, everybody, all right? Thank you again to the live chat. You guys are absolutely amazing. Had a great Fun. time recapping what was Atalanta versus Juve. Juve getting the big uh, victory there, helping our shot at uh, staying in top four and qualifying for Champions League next season. But all focus is going to be on Thursday. That is an absolute big one. But we've got Dushan firing again. He's looking way more confident and starting to look like the Dushan uh, we saw when he first came to us and the one we've always wanted to see. I hope he can keep it rolling on Thursday. And Federico Chiesa, I want to see him get in there and get that start on that one, all right? Everybody, thank you once again. Australian fan base, I have a massive respect Beauties. for you guys, okay? 3 a.m. comes quick. And yes, I've been battling this damn cold. I will take care. It's been lingering for, I don't know, like a week now. But I love my kids, but they're pigeons. They really are. Okay. These daycares and stuff. Oh, my God. There's pigeons. Spread and germ. But I love them. We'll see what happens, though. Now, everybody, take care. Enjoy Victory Monday. We'll talk to you tomorrow on the Daily Updates video. And then, of course, live Thursday. Fino alla fine. Forza Juve. Ciao tutti. Take care.